Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. It seems clear that the essence of our duty and the fundamental requirement of our mortal life is captured in these brief phrases from any number of scenes in the Savior's mortal ministry. He is saying to us, trust me, learn of me, do what I do. Then, when you walk where I am going, he says, we can talk about where you're going and the problems you face and the troubles you have. If you will follow me, I will lead you out of darkness, he promises. I will give you answers to your prayers. I will give you rest to your souls. Ye can no more than desire to believe, Alma says. Exercising just a particle of faith, giving even a small place for the promises of God to find a home. That is enough to begin. Just believing, just having a molecule of faith, simply hoping for things which are not seen in our lives, but which are nevertheless truly there to be bestowed. That simple step, when focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, has ever been and always will be the first principle of his eternal gospel, the first step out of despair. we must repent. Perhaps the most hopeful and encouraging word in the Christian vocabulary. We thank our Father in heaven, we are allowed to change. We thank Jesus, we can change. And ultimately, we do so only with their divine assistance. Anything we can change, we should change, and we must forgive the rest. In this way, our access to the Savior's atonement becomes as unimpeded as we with our imperfections can make it. He will take it from there. Take upon you the name of Christ. Do the things which I have told you, I have seen that your Lord and your Redeemer will do. Prayer and fasting and meditation upon his purposes, savoring the scriptures, giving service to others, succoring the weak, lifting up the hands which hang down, strengthening the feeble knees, above all else, loving, loving with the pure love of Christ. That gift, please note, that never faileth. That gift that beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Sometimes we seek heaven too obliquely, focusing on programs or history or the experience of others. These are important, but not as important as personal experience. True discipleship and the strength that comes from experiencing firsthand the majesty of his touch. I testify that the Savior's atonement lifts us not only from the burden of our sins, but also the burden of our disappointments, 
and sorrows, our heartaches, and our despair. From the beginning, trust in such help was to give us both a reason and a way to improve, an incentive to lay down our burdens and take up our salvation. There can and will be plenty of difficulties in life. Nevertheless, the soul that comes unto Christ, who knows his voice and strives to do as he did, finds a strength, as our hymn says, beyond our own. The Savior reminds us that he has graven us upon the palms of his hands.